Good morning, everyone. Today is a discussion video regarding rewards and loot because, as you guys know, I have been playing a lot of the First Descendant, and for some reason, the drop rates in First Descendants are worse than NGS, but it doesn't feel as bad to farm in the First Descendant, at least in my personal opinion. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily, so if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. Alright, so the very first thing I want to start off with is comparing the Wingard Weapon Series, which is currently the best in slot, versus the Thunder Cage, which is one of the legendary weapons that you can get in the First Ascendant. And the main comparison I want to do is, of course, the drop rate, first of all. So, the drop rate for the Wingard series is relatively low. This weapon has been out for almost five months, and I still know plenty of people who have never seen this weapon drop. So, uh, you know, it is still incredibly rare. However, the moment it does drop, it's fully completed, or you don't need to put it on anything else. You just enhance it to 90, you limit break it, you weapon potential, and you throw in your augments, and you're done, right? Versus the first Ascendant, it's relatively easy to get your first Thunder Cage. It's actually like part of the main storyline. You get a Thunder Cage, but you need multiple copies of the Thunder Cage in order to unlock its potential to like its maximum unique passive or whatever, which is that huge electric AoE, which is actually awesome. But on top of that, you also need to reroll its substats in order to get the Trifecta, or well, there's four of them, so Quadfecta. And then on top of that, you also need to put in all the different modules, which are basically the same thing as augments. So there's a little bit more work that needs to be done with the first ascendant progression for the Thunder Cage or for their weapons. Because first of all, in order to make the weapon itself, you need to farm four separate pieces. And a lot of these pieces are, well, all of these pieces are locked behind RNG. So you just need to run certain dungeons or you need to run certain missions over and over and over in order to obtain these pieces. Now, now, thankfully, since Thunder Cage is one of the more entry-level legendaries that you get really early in the game, it is much easier to obtain compared to, let's say, Ultimate Bunny. For those who watched my stream yesterday, we did manage to get Ultimate Bunny in six hours or so. So, you know, I was incredibly lucky. I am definitely an outlier. I feel like the regular player in order to get Ultimate Bunny is going to need to devote like 20 to 30, maybe even more hours. I've heard people devoting 200 hours to get Ultimate Bunny. So because you are at the mercy of RNG. But the main thing that I want to point out over here was when I start farming for rare items in NGS, I get fatigued a lot quicker compared to the first Descendant. And in the beginning, I didn't really understand why. I was like, wait, it's still a grind. The first Descendant drop rates are technically worse because it's like a 6% drop rate for the Ultimate Bunny code. However, it's not just 6% for the code because you need a farm for the little chest or whatever those Amphordite thingies are. And then you need to gamble and open those. But in order to open those, you need void shards. And so technically the grind for an ultimate descendant or the grind for an ultimate weapon is technically very, very tedious and incredibly grindy compared to NGS, where it's like, oh, once you get the weapon, you're good to go. But for some reason, at the time that I was farming and I was streaming, I didn't know why I was okay with this crazy tedious grind in the first Descendant, but I was getting really sick of NGS much quicker, even though NGS technically had a better drop system. Um, and what I figured out, or what I feel is the main difference, is twofold. The first one, chat was the one that casually convinced me about it, was when you get a Thunder Cage, when you get an Ultimate Descendant, it is game changing you know the moment you get like ultimate bunny the moment you get a ultimate weapon or a legendary weapon it really changes the way that you play the game it's like wow the game is significantly easier i i don't know if you guys can hear the thunder but it's thunderstorming outside right now i'm talking about thunder cages and stuff like that right um but nevertheless in the first ascendant when you get something good you know you farm you farm you farm you're grinding you're grinding you finally get that drop it is game changing. It, it makes you appreciate all the hard work you put in because you're like, wow, I finally got this awesome item that actually changes the way that I play the game. 
And because of that, you know, this is what chat convinced me. And I was like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. However, before chat told me about that, the thing that was always on my mind was because each run that you were doing was short and sweet. It was like under two minutes. So even though I didn't get it in that run, you know, I didn't get the gamble, the Amphrodite or whatever the gambling item is, or I didn't get the drop rate from that 6% drop rate or 20% drop rate, depending on what the hell I was farming, it didn't feel as bad because each run was very short and sweet. So even though the drop rate was incredibly low, each run was really, really quick. So in an hour, I was able to run like 20, 30, 40 runs. So it wasn't like, oh, you know, I'm stuck here forever. It didn't feel as bad. Versus when I farm for a Wingard weapon, first of all, I need to be hyper-focused because it's locked behind Dark Falls Dalian, where you do have a death limit, you do have a DPS check, and you just need to be hyper-focused for a long period of time because you just don't want to doze off and die. And, um, you know, each fight or each run does take about 12 to 15 minutes, depending on your DPS as well as your group. So at the time, I began to think, I was like, okay, maybe that's why I'm a little bit more fatigued when it comes to farming in NGS. It's because I always need to be focused and then in an hour, I can only do four runs. So it feels worse that I don't get this drop or if the drop rate's incredibly low because I only get four attempts every hour. So maybe after like a three or four hour grind session, I'm just mentally drained and physically drained and I'm just like, oh, I don't want to farm anymore. Versus in the first Descendant, I can just switch off my brain, go unga boonga mode, and then we just blaze through everything, mow down everything, and it's not as difficult. And each run is relatively short, so even though you don't get it in that run, you're like, oh, it's okay, well, let's get in the next run, and the next run, and the next run. And so the grind session just keeps going, and it doesn't feel as bad. Now, you know, if we sit down and logically look at this, Technically, the NGS method is probably better because you don't need to grind like four different parts in order to craft a specific weapon or a specific character, right? Like if we look at the Ultimate Descendants, you have four different blueprints. You gotta get the code and then three blueprints and all of this is RNG. And then after you get the little capsule, the Amphrodite, whatever thingy, you gotta open them and that has a chance of giving you the blueprint or some random useless item. And so the grind for that is actually nightmarish because you have to go through like all these different hoops and the grinding is like, it literally feels endless sometimes. Um, but when you do get it, you're like, holy crap, that's amazing. I finally got one piece. And maybe that's why. Maybe it's the progression system of like, I got one piece here, I got another piece here, you know, maybe I farm one piece every single day or every week, and then eventually I get all the pieces, I smash them together, and you know, the reward is worth it. I feel like that's what chat convinced me about it, is like, yes, it's worth it because the moment you get said descendant, the moment you get said weapon, is going to change your life. It's going to change the way that you play the game. It's going to be freaking amazing. And in NGS right now, it doesn't seem that way. You know, the difference between having a Wingard and an Exalia weapon and an Aerodim weapon is like, yes, you do more damage. But does it change the way that you play the game? Not really. You're still doing the same thing as you've always done. It's just you do more damage. And so it would feel a lot more cooler if these ultra rare weapons had a very unique passive. Like I understand they tried a little bit with the wing guard weapon as well as the flugel guard weapon series. Where it's like, oh yeah, when you photon blast, you know, it deals extra damage for your whole team and stuff like that. Or it marks the enemy. So like... That was a step in the right direction, but I feel like they can go a lot more crazier on these ultra rare weapons. Like not just weapon potential, but like cosmetic looks as well. Make it look really crazy. Have like some aura or some like, you know, special effects when you attack like wings spring out or something. I don't know. I don't really know what I want. I just think that it needs to be something more game changing than just, oh, it does more damage. Like the reason why Thunder Cage is such a great weapon is because every time you shoot, it does this gigantic electricity AOE that kills all the mobs like instantaneously. 
And when you max out the weapon potential, or the, um, the unique, passive, whatever they call it in the first Ascendant, you get a 100% chance to proc that whenever you shoot something. So it's just like, once you max it out, it is game changing, because instead of having it proc like at 33% chance, at 100% chance, you're just literally mowing through mobs and, you know, armies of enemies, and you're just running through the map, blitzing through everything really, really quickly. But we don't have something like that in NGS. Like, you know, in the base game, we did have a couple weapons that were pretty interesting. But in NGS, we don't have anything crazy like that. I think the craziest thing we've had in NGS was with, with the Vershmel weapons, the 100% crit rate. That was really cool to see. But, you know, there was, a, there was a downside. The downside was we lose some potency. How cool would it be if you could upgrade your Vershmel weapon through this stupid method where you had to farm a bunch of different things, but it would delete that negative part of the Vershmel weapons. It would not have negative potency. It would give you positive potency and you get your 100% crit rate. And maybe if you add on like some other thing, you can get even more crit damage. And you know, with all of that added together, it makes the Vershmel weapons competitive with the Wingard weapon. Like that would be so much cooler. It would have a lot more different choices of gear and weapons and armors and stuff like that. I think that's what I would like to see a little bit more in NGS. Because right now it's very cookie cutter build. It's just, yes, you just want damage, 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 damage. If you need a little bit of HP and tankiness, go that path. But at the end of the day, the only real thing that matters is damage. And like, yes, it's sort of the same in the first Descendant, but the first Descendant gives you all these cool different passives, like each Descendant has cool different powers, and it just mixes things up a little bit, gives people a little bit more customizability so that they can kind of show off their own flair. And then, um, of course, we do have to address the elephant in the room, and that is, of course, the assets. You know, all the different descendants, the reason why I went so crazy on Ultimate Bunny is because she's got a big butt, right? And um, at the end of the day, that's kind of what sells, right? If they introduced some weapons or some armors that would change the outfit or the look of your character, that would be really interesting. Now, of course, you don't have to force it upon the players. They will be able to enable or disable the look depending on what they want. Maybe they want their own outfit to override what the weapon gives. But, you know, let's say that there is an armor set that looks really, really sexy or looks really, really awesome or looks really badass on your character. That would be really cool because right now our armors are literally, they're, they're, they're invisible. You don't see them when you put them on your character. We had this in the base game. When you put specific armor pieces or just any armor piece on a character, it you would see the physical armor. It was awesome. Um, now, of course, I know some people didn't like them, and so you could just hide the armor pieces and, you know, make them invisible, and boom, it's done. But I think that would be really cool as well, you know, if we had specific armors that you could put on, you could see what it looked like, and if you had the set, it would have, like, a cool effect or something, or maybe just set armors, that would be nice too. You know, there's a lot of stuff that NGS can do. Um, but at the end of the day, NGS's development team is relatively small, so changes are really slow, but... It's just something that I noticed when I was playing the first Ascendant yesterday. And, you know, I'm going to continue to play the first Ascendant the rest of the month, probably until uh, October, because there's not really much to do in NGS right now, other than the dailies. Now, another thing that I noticed earlier today when I was farming the LTQ is there's actually a little limited time task over here where if you complete it 15 times the LTQ, you actually get 500,000 Meseta. So I thought that would be pretty interesting to just point out because, you know, 500 100,000 Meseta is no small amount. That is a decent amount of Meseta. So uh, if you haven't done so already, you know, take advantage of this. You, you have plenty of time. You can literally just do the limited time quest once every single day just to get your uh, Augment Transfer Pass vouchers. And you will complete this in the span of two weeks. Well, two weeks and a little bit more. But it's definitely something to keep in mind that you do want to run at least 15 runs of the LTQ to get your 500,000 Meseta here. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.